On the 3rd of October in 1994, 32-year-old Shirley de Guay from Prince Edward Island, located in Canada, disappeared. Search teams looked for Shirley for weeks and whilst they found her car, which had traces of blood in it, there was no sign of Shirley. However, there was an unexpected hero in this tale in the guise of a cat. This is the story of Snowball, the cat that played a pivotal role in solving a crime. Snowball was an all-white male cat that was owned by the parents of Douglas Beamish. Beamish was the on-and-off-again partner of Shirley de Guay. Shirley was a mother to five children and she went missing, and Beamish, who was a convicted felon, was on parole at the time, so he was the number one suspect, but there was no evidence to tie him to Shirley's disappearance. During the initial search for Shirley, her car was found along with blood, but no Shirley. Nearby was a man's leather jacket which had blood on it, along with several white coarse hairs. It was at this point Constable Savoy from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police recalled seeing an all-white male cat called Snowball living with Beamish's parents. Savoy wondered whether these hairs might belong to Snowball, so he sent the jacket off to the police laboratory to undergo DNA examination. The blood on the jacket matched the blood in the car, but despite his best efforts, the scientists and Savoy could only say that the white hair belonged to a cat, but their microscopic hair analysis was not accurate enough to assign specific ownership to a single cat like Snowball. Undeterred, Constable Savoy contacted the Animal Genetics Group at the Laboratory of Genomic Diversity in Frederick, Maryland, based in the States, and they agreed to attempt to get DNA analysis of the hairs and Snowball the cat. The constable collected a blood sample and hair sample from Snowball, and the main geneticist involved in this case was called Marilyn Menotti Raymond, and she developed a method that looked at short tandem repeats in the cat's DNA. Short tandem repeats are repeating sequences of DNA that are found in the genomes of living organisms, including humans. Large databases of information on STRs in the general population tell analysts how much variation exists at any given STR location. That information can help forensic analysts determine the conclusiveness of a match between two samples. The length of the repeat unit can vary from a few base hairs to several dozen base pairs. So the laboratory found that when they were DNA testing the hair root from the man's leather jacket and the DNA from Snowball's blood sample, they matched. However, the celebrations couldn't begin just yet because Prince Edward Island, where Shirley had gone missing, is home to many, many cats and the jacket was found in the woods where cats will potter around so they had to make sure that this sample was matching specifically to Snowball and not other cats that shared similar DNA otherwise the case would be scuppered so the constable went around the neighborhood collecting blood samples from the local cat community to compare these against the DNA to that that was the hairs on the jacket they were all different, which meant the hairs on the jacket had had to come from Snowball. This was a pivotal moment in forensic investigation. It was the first time that animal DNA had been used in a criminal trial, and it set a legal precedent, allowing DNA fingerprinting of animals to be admitted as evidence. Beamish was convicted of Shirley's unaliving and was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Thank you goes out to Poppy McGinley for her suggestion for today's story and thank you for listening through my lisping whilst I put up and get my lips around these new braces.